Question number three is about Kirchhoff's laws. The first part of it asks us to state each of Kirchhoff's laws and the physical quantity associated with each law. So Kirchhoff's, let's begin with Kirchhoff's first law. That is the sum of currents into a point are equal to the sum of currents out of that point. Very common very common mistake made by students in this kind of question is to not fully read the whole question. It says state each of Kirchhoff's laws and the physical quantity associated with each law that is conserved in the circuit. Kirchhoff's first law is conservation of charge. In other words, as you go around the circuit, all the charges flowing into a point are conserved and flow out of that point. Kirchhoff's second law tells us that the sum of EMFs around a loop is equal to the sum of potential differences, PDs, around that loop. And for Kirchhoff's second law, it is, it is evidence that energy is conserved. Next part of this question shows us a circuit here. It is quite a complex circuit. It's got three resistors, two of them in parallel with each other, and a third resistor outside in series with, the, with them. The first part of this, part I, asks us to calculate the current in the 750 ohm resistor. This is a Kirchhoff's first law problem. We're interested in this point here. We know that there is 0 0.030 amps going into that point, And we know there is 0 0.010 amps coming out, plus our mystery current going through the 750 ohm resistor, which we call I. So we can rearrange that to get I equals 0 0.030, take away 0 0.010, so therefore I equals 0 0.020 amps. It also wants us to work out the potential difference across the 750 ohm resistor. Now we know that the current is 0 0.020, and we know that the resistance obviously is 750 ohms, so therefore V equals I R 0 0.020 multiplied by 750 equals 15 volts. And part three asks us to calculate these two unknown resistances here. Now we know that the potential difference across the 750 ohm resistor is 15 volts and two resistors in parallel with each other will have the same potential difference, so it is also 15 volts across R2. So for R2, V equals 15 volts. You know the current I equals 0 0.010 amps, so the resistance is voltage divided by current which equals 15 divided by 0 0.010 which gives us 1500 ohms and this is a potential divider circuit here if there are 15 volts across this part of the circuit out of a total of 45 volts there must be 30 volts across this remaining part of the circuit. So for R1, V equals 30 volts. The current I we know to be 0 0.030. So R is going to be 30 divided by 0 
0.030, which is 1000 ohms. Part C uses the same circuit, but it has replaced R2 with a light dependent resistor. So the first mark is for drawing the correct symbol here. So a light dependent resistor is a resistor. Sometimes it's drawn with a circle around it as well, with two arrows coming in at 45 degrees to represent light. Part II explains that when the light intensity increases, the resistance of the LDR decreases. So we need to state and explain without calculation how the potential difference across this 750 ohm resistor, which is also the same as the potential difference across the LDR, varies as the intensity of the light incident on the LDR increases. So the first thing that happens here is that the resistance of the LDR decreases, which means that the parallel resistors, that is the 750 ohm and the LDR combined resistance decreases. This is a potential divider circuit, so the resi resistance of each part of the potential divider is proportional to the potential difference. Therefore, the PD of the 750 ohm resistor decreases because the resistance of that combination has also decreased. The final part of this question explains that the LDR is to be used to monitor changes in light intensity. So we need to draw a suitable electrical meter in the LDR branch of the circuit to measure these changes. Well, the best we can use would be a voltmeter. That would allow us to measure the potential difference as it changes across the LDR. And voltmeters must always be connected in parallel. If you wanted to use an ammeter, that's fine, but you'd have to draw that in series. And part two asks us to say what it is. Well, it is a voltmeter. And also to say a sensible maximum scale reading, well, the battery here is at 45 volts. Therefore, we need a voltmeter that goes up to 45 volts.